With version 0.14.0 just around the corner, it's a great time to learn Zig. Unfortunately, it's not version 1, which means that Zig isn't stable enough for me to teach you Zig directly. So instead of making a video that will be outdated in a few months, I'm going to teach you how you can learn Zig by yourself. Also, I'm not going to tell you what Zig is about or try to convince you to use it. I personally think it's a cool and fun language, but you need to make your own opinion. Oh, and by the way, I expect you to already know a programming language like C or C++ or maybe Go or Rust. If you don't, you can always try to learn Zig, but I think you're going to have a hard time. Not because Zig is hard, but because it lacks beginner friendly resources. So yeah, if you're like a beginner, learning Zig is probably not for you. So maybe save yourself some troubles and learn C first. But I mean, if you're up to a challenge, you, you can try, you know. I don't want to discourage anyone to, from trying. So the first thing you want to do is to install the Zig compiler. You can either go to ziglang.org, click on get started and then read the documentation to install Zig. Or you can first install ZigUp, which is a way to download and manage Zig compilers. So if you go to this GitHub page and you scroll a little bit, you click on releases, then you select the file for your operating system and architecture. So I'm on Linux x64, so I can download this. So you can extract its content and inside you will find the Z. Then make sure to add the path to the directory that contains ZigUp to your path environment variable so that you can type ZigUp from anywhere. And then you can install the version you want of Zig using ZigUp followed by the version number you want to install. Then you probably want to configure your favorite code editor. So go to zigtools.org, then click on ZLS, which is the language server of Zing. And then you can pick your favorite text editor and follow the instructions. There's also a guide on build and save, if that's something you want to do. All right, now make sure everything works. So create a new file. Let's call it uh, hello world. The zig then go to ziglang.org scroll a little bit click on more cut samples then copy this example paste it inside your file then save your file and then type zig run hello world and if everything is working you should see hello world Okay, once you make sure everything is working, go to ziglang.org, click on documentation, and on the left, make sure you are on the right version. This is the Zig language reference, which contains pretty much everything you want to know about Zig. Uh, I don't really recommend to read everything right away because there's just a lot and Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to understand what's going on. So instead, what I recommend you to do is read the introduction and maybe a few parts and then go and look on the left at the table of contents and click on the different like sections and try to learn what you need to learn to be able to start writing some programs. Like, oh, what is an enum? How does it work? What are unions? Tagged unions? There's a switch, while, for, you know, try to get a feel of the language. So, so you will see there's a lot of example. A good way to learn is to like try them out yourself. Then a good way to get some practice and learn the language is to do Ziglings, which is a collection of tiny broken programs that you have to fix. And this is going to teach you Zig. So head over to codeberg.org slash ziglings slash exercises. Then scroll to the getting started. And what you see is that it requires a development build of the Zig compiler. 
So you, you need to make sure you're using a nightly build. And that's something you will see pretty often in Zeek projects is that they use nightly builds. And so to do that, you can use ZigUp and do ZigUp master to get a nightly build of Zig. And once you have the right version of Zig, then you can clone this repository. And once you're inside the Ziglings directory, you can do Zig build, which will compile the project and will show you some compile error. Here, the error is that main is not marked pub. So what you have to do is edit this file. So you can open this file. Then there's a bunch of comments that explains a lot of things. Then you can solve the problem and you run zig build. And you see that this fixed the problem. So it passed and now you need to do the same for the second file. And yeah, you can just do that for all the exercises. And uh, it's a great and fun way to learn the language. So yeah, I recommend you to do that. Okay, once you're done with that, I think it's, uh, it's time to build your own project. There's not a better way to learn a language than to actually try and build something. If you don't know what to do, you can find some ideas on this GitHub repository build your own X. So you have like a bunch of ideas of like things you can do. So maybe that can be helpful. To help you complete your project, go to ziglang.org, click on documentation to have the reference near you and click also on the Zig standard library to have the documentation of the Zig standard library, which is going to be very useful. This documentation is pretty bare bone. It takes some time to get used to it, but don't be afraid to go around and uh, click at the function and click on the source links and read the comments and the code. Like one of the best ways to be able to do what you want is really to read the source code. So don't be afraid to do this. Not only it's very useful, but it's also a very valuable skill to be able to go and read code. But at the beginning, it can be quite difficult to like understand how things work and how to use them. So a useful resource is zig.guide, which has some information about the language and about the standard library. So if you want to know how to use hash maps, here you have some examples. But yeah, make sure to like look at the right version of the documentation though. So you know, if you want to know about threads, about like reading some files, about array list, even some information about the build system, then well it's uh, it's uh, it's useful. It's useful. So use it. Now I want to share some other very useful resources. The first one is a blog called openmymind.net, which has a lot of articles about Zig. There's like a guide to learn Zig, which can be quite useful, but maybe a little bit outdated. And uh, yeah, it's a good way to get introduced to some like feature of Zig, like BitCast, for example, or Cast. It's a good way, it's a very friendly way to learn uh, some Zig, which is a, a little bit more friendly than looking at the Zig language reference. Then on YouTube, you have Zig Showtime, which has some really useful and interesting videos, like this one about memory allocators, or that one about pointers. This channel is run by Loris Crow, who also has a blog and who is the VP of community at the Zig Software Foundation. He also has some article about Zig. And if you're into Advent of Code and you want to learn Zig by doing Advent of Code, he also has some tips on how to do that. Oh, and he's also working on a book 
So maybe if you're watching this video in the future, maybe this book exists and you can read this book. On YouTube, you will also find Dude the Boulder, who made a lot of videos teaching Zig. And so I'm sure you can learn a lot from these videos. And if you go back to ziglang.org and click on join a community, you are redirected to the wiki of Zig and you can find uh, some community to participate in. My favorite one is the forum Zigit, which is a very friendly place where you can ask your questions. On ziglang.org, you also have this learn section, which has some links to help you get started. And there's also a link to a book, which looks pretty good, pretty recent, and it seems to be up to date. Looks pretty, pretty good. So maybe, you know, maybe I was wrong. Maybe there's some beginner-friendly uh, resources. So if you go back to ziglang.org in the learn section, you will also find a guide on the Zig build system because Zig comes with a very powerful build system. It can do a lot of things, but it's not necessarily very well documented. But that's already a good starting point. Actually, you can find more information in the standard library. If you go to build, you will find some more information. And one last thing I want to show you is if you type zig alone, you will see that zig can be used as a C compiler or a C++ compiler. So if you create a new like hello.cpp file and you do include your stream and it main std c out hello std end of line then you can do zig c plus plus hello.cpp and it will compile your C++ file. And you can do the same thing we see. And so when it's done, you can execute your file. But also what you want to notice is that you can actually initialize the project using zig init. And then you can add some dependency using fetch. So let, let me show you how you can do this. I want to create a game small game i can do zig init and it creates a bunch of files i don't actually need uh, this root zig files i'm just going to delete it then um i'm just going to pretty much delete everything in the main zig file and i'm going to edit the build.zig file I'm just going to remove this root thing and the test. All right. And then let's say I want to add Relib so I can use this repository which is a Relib bindings for Zig. And I can do Zig fetch and save this repository as a dependency. So if I run this, then you'll see it will modify the build.zig.zone and you add this dependency. And then inside my build.zig file, I can add this like here and copy this except i don't need ray gui so i can do this and then inside main let's copy some example so if i go to examples and let's go to shapes Let's take this one, for example. Let's just copy everything. And then we can just run zig build run. And it should compile. 
and run the project if everything is all right. Uh, yeah, it works. It's pretty pretty cool. So yeah, that's it. So learning Zig today is really just about going around and try to, you know, find resources and find the information by yourself. And might not be the best experience, you know, it might not be the easiest, but it actually built some skills, I would say, to like be able to like go around and really like figure out and understand how things works. So yeah. Hopefully this video was useful. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was terrible. Uh, I don't know. If you learn in Zig, if you enjoy it, tell me about your experience. Maybe you have some cool resources you want to share. Feel free to do so.